Okay, and left. Ah, this game is hard. It's literally impossible to play this game for the first time and not die a billion times before making any sort of meaningful progress. That's because in Dragon's Lair, failure isn't merely a consequence of making a bad move. It's an essential occurrence if you ever wish to make any progress in the game. It's also inevitable. I mean, even if you just start the game and stand there, you will die. That's because the game is designed to kill you until you figure out how to avoid decisions that lead to your death. This has to be how Hollywood feels about making video game movies. After countless attempts, and in spite of all the source material they have to pull from, it seems as though Hollywood just can't quite get it right. I mean, yeah, there are a few games based on movies that I personally enjoy, and I'm sure you could name some that you enjoy too. But could you really call very many video game movies masterpieces without trying to be ironic? Video game movies are to Hollywood as Dragon's Lair is to donks like you and me. The only difference being is that, given enough tries, we eventually learn from our mistakes. The folks in Hollywood, they're a resilient bunch though. They're not going to be discouraged by a flop or two, or three, or ten. No, they're going to keep trying until they get it right, or until of course we stop paying to watch the movies they make. But of course, you and I know that that isn't going to happen anytime soon, and so do they. That's why yet another video game based feature has been announced, by none other than Netflix. Yeah, Netflix announced on Twitter that they're adapting the 80s arcade franchise into a feature. There are a few things to unpack here, but let's start with a little bit of information on this film adaptation. Before that though, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel because it really helps when you do. Let's blow this cartridge. If you've been following the works of Don Bluth, who created Dragon's Lair, as well as many fantastic animated films such as All Dogs Go to Heaven, The Secret of Nim, and The Lamb Before Time, to name a few, this movie adaptation may not come as a surprise to you because Don Bluth has been trying to make a movie based on the game for literally decades now. And for good reason. Given he's had so much success making features like the animated films since making Dragon's Lair, it's actually kind of a surprise that we're barely getting the movie now. However, and I don't mean to be the controversial hot take guy, believe me, I hate that guy, but there's one glaring issue I have with the film already. And let me preface what I'm about to say by asking you a question. What made Dragon's Lair so special to begin with? The gameplay? I mean, it's fun. Was it the story? Probably not. Was it the complex and interesting characters? Uh, no. It was the art style and animation. At the time Dragon's Lair hit the arcades in the 80s, there was nothing like it aesthetically. Even today there's nothing quite like it. It literally feels like playing a cartoon. And the animation doesn't even look like it was compromised in any way by the hardware limitations of the 80s. Dragon's Lair is quite literally an interactive cartoon. Animated by the guy partly responsible for the animation in classics like Sleeping Beauty and The Sword in the Stone. And now you might be asking, how, how could this possibly lead to me saying something negative about the film? Well, let's take a look at that tweet by Netflix. Hear ye, hear ye, dragon and sword emojis. Okay, cheesy, but on brand, right? Let's continue. Netflix is developing a live action feature adaptation of the legendary arcade game Dragon's Lair. Okay. If you've seen any of my previous videos about video games being adapted into shows and movies, you might already know by now that my biggest pet peeve is Hollywood's obsession with making live action feature adaptations of video games. And look, I get it, in some cases it makes sense. Mortal Kombat, for instance, is a game about humans or human-like beings, and the first few games literally used realistic looking sprites. They wanted the game to look like it was live action. Therefore, the Mortal Kombat live action films are justified and perfect, and you're not allowed to badmouth them because I grew up watching them. But a movie about Dragon's Lair, a video game that literally has Don Bluth's signature art and animation to thank for most of its success, is not going to feature Don Bluth's signature art style? I have to ask, why? But I guess I should also mention that it isn't all bad news. I mean, initially I thought, do the folks at Netflix really have what it takes to produce a quality video game related movie? But then I remember that it was Netflix that produced and distributed the Castlevania series, and I enjoyed that. Netflix is allegedly also working on series adaptations for Hyper Light Drifter, Assassin's Creed, and Devil May Cry. Based on this information, it's safe to say they take their video game adaptation seriously. However, and I'm going to have to bring the negative guy back for a second, it's also worth noting that Castlevania and the other series adaptations I mentioned are all animated. Not live action. But I don't want to continue being that negative hot take guy, so let's look at that tweet again for more information. Okay, hear ye, hear ye, blah blah blah, live action. Oh, uh, here it is. Ryan Reynolds is in talk to play the noble knight Dirk the Daring on his quest to rescue Princess Daphne from the titular dragon. Again, at first glance I was like, really? Does Ryan Reynolds have to be in everything? It sounds negative, but I feel the more focus there is on star power in these video game films, the more likely it is that the screenplay is probably going to suck, because they're relying on the star power. But I set my past trauma with Hollywood video game films aside to really think about this. 
Sure, he's in a ton of cheesy chick flicks, some of which I have to admit I kind of like. And he's also kind of a one-note performance kind of guy. He typically plays one character every single time, but he does do it pretty well. He's usually like the self-deprecating, yet self-assured, charming, funny guy. And even though it probably should have been overplayed by now, he always kind of finds a way to make it feel refreshing. His performance in Deadpool is proof of that. With that being said, clumsy, self-deprecating, and charming pretty much describes Dirk the Daring perfectly. So to be honest, Ryan Reynolds seems like a pretty good fit to me. Now if you haven't played Dragon's Lair before, let me give you a little crash course on how it works. The game is essentially a series of animated scenes. Each animated scene has at least one source of danger. These sources of danger can be anything from giant constricting tentacles to seemingly endless pits or pillars that you simply fail to avoid. In order to evade these obstacles, you have to press the D-pad or move the joystick in the correct direction. Each decision will lead you to a new scenario or just kill you. After dying a million times, you'll eventually figure out which direction to move in in order to progress and avoid certain death. I'm telling you this because it's worth considering the possibility that Netflix may attempt to make the film into an interactive experience, just like the game. It might sound crazy at first, but it wouldn't be the first time Netflix did something like this. I mean, in 2018, Netflix did release Black Mirror Bandersnatch, which was essentially a choose-your-own-adventure episode of Black Mirror. Given the nature of the original Dragon's Lair games, something like that would be on brand. Would it be a good idea, though? I mean, maybe, if Exit perfectly. Is it something I'd be interested in? Honestly, probably not. If I wanted to play Dragon's Lair, I'd just play Dragon's Lair. I mean, honestly, it's not like there's a shortage of platforms to play it on. It's on the Sega CD, CDI, Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One, GameCube. You can get it on Steam. The trilogy was just released on the Switch. And there's even an interactive DVD that allows you to play the game on your damn DVD player. In all honesty, we just don't need another way to play Dragon's Lair. With that being said, I am looking forward to seeing how it comes out, and I truly hope for the best. Especially because it seems making the film has been a goal of Don Bluth's for a very long time. I just hope he's given a great deal of creative control. Anyway, I'd like to hear what your thoughts are on the upcoming film, and if you think I got it all wrong, feel free to let me have it in the comments. If you haven't already, please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel so I can continue to make videos like this. Let's blow this cartridge. Hey, you very good!